site analysis, diagnosing diseases and other problems in the orchard. Troubleshooting orchard and vineyard problems is a multi-step process. It takes an objective view, a step back and then a step inward. The first step in diagnosing or troubleshooting is to collect general data on the site and the host plants. For example, cultivar or variety may be important if one is prone to infections or not hardy in our area. Production systems also come with their own challenges. High density orchards may be more likely to become infected by stress pathogens than plantings that are left to their natural architecture. Plant age, soil type, and other attributes of the site are often relevant to the diagnosis or solution. Note fertilization and spray applications, both in the orchard and nearby sites. Recall source of stock plants. Examine drainage and sun exposure. Write down as much information as possible, trying to identify general information about the overall situation. Photos can be helpful too. Now take a closer look at the site and the plants affected. Take note of which plants are problematic, how many are affected, and whether a pattern is obvious. Notice which plants are affected, the pattern of those affected plants, their location, age, and anything that may set the affected plants apart from the healthy ones. Determine if all affected plants are the same cultivar or species, or if different types of plants are showing symptoms. Don't forget to look at weeds, grasses, and nearby wooded edges. Patterns may follow slopes, drainage swales, rocky subsoil, or hard pans. You may notice that new plants are affected or those on the outer edge of a bed or row. Weather patterns may cause isolated hail, settled frost, or soggy soils. Valleys or low-lying areas might show more damage as a result of surface water or settling frost. Write down as much of this information as possible. Now look at individual plants. Try to determine whether symptoms seem to have progressed gradually or rapidly. Think about recurring symptoms and whether the same types of symptoms show up each year. Take a closer look at how symptoms are progressing. Are symptoms moving from branch tips downward or are the lower branches or inner canopies the beginning of the problem? Examine the trunk of woody plants. Lift leaves and runners of, of herbaceous plants to examine crowns. Note whether symptoms are uniform over the plant, new leaves or shoots are more affected, or if older growth is the problem. For woody plants, determine whether single branches or canes are symptomatic, or if all plant parts are equally affected. Again, take notes and photos. Examine branches, branch tips, canes, and trunks. Look for obvious damage like cankers, wounds, sunken areas, or discolored bark. Ooze or fungal structures might be present. Leftover staking, wire, or old plant tags can become embedded in bark. It is especially important to examine the lower trunk. Mower, string trimmer, or mechanical hoe damage is common on lower trunks. Pull back grass, weeds, and mulch to take a closer look. Over mulching and planting too deeply can soften bark and create an entry wound for fungi or insects. Voles and rodent damage can be common in orchards. A root flare should be obvious on trees and buttress roots should extend outward without circling. Take photos of anything unusual. The final step is to note leaf symptoms. Leaf spots can be on tops or bottoms of leaves or both. Sometimes fungal growth or fungal structures are obvious while other times they are not. Look closely and take notes of color and texture of leaf symptoms. Some other leaf symptoms might be different from leaf spots. Marginal leaf scorch, for example, is limited to leaf ends or tips. Mosaic or modeling can be variations of dark and light green, yellow, and white. Blighting is the rapid death in which leaves remain attached to branches but turn brown. Wilting can occur during hot periods or remain permanent. Galls, holes, distortion may be present in old or new leaves. Discoloration can be yellow or red, and chlorosis in, is the yellow leaf with darker veins. Take note of any of these specific symptoms and whether they occur on certain plants or cultivars or on particular areas of plants. All of this information will be needed during the diagnostic process. 
Analyzing the site, beginning with a wide angle view and then narrowing your scope is very important. Take notes and photos. Often this process leads to obvious answers. If not, that information will be needed when submitting samples to the diagnostic lab. By making this method a habit, problems can be identified more quickly and more importantly, can be resolved as soon as possible.